morning everyone. Oak Bluff, Manitoba, west of Winnipeg. How you doing today? We're gonna go do some trucking. I picked up this load of 4x4 posts yesterday in Bemidji, Minnesota. Today I have to deliver it here in Winnipeg. Once this is delivered, like I was telling you yesterday, I have to come back here to Oak Bluff, which is it's all on the west side of Winnipeg that I'm working in this morning. Load up the load here and take it back to our yard. Today is a Friday when I'm filming this and that load needs to be delivered on Monday. So I'm gonna pick up the load today and I'm gonna leave with it on Sunday get to the customer so that I can be there first thing Monday morning so that I'm ready for a reload shortly after that on Monday so that we can go 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 and make up for this truck being down a couple of days this week earlier this week we had an engine light that came on it turned out to be the cam crankshaft speed sensor replaced it and so far knock on wood so far problems been solved so that's good that's really good uh, the weekend before that the truck was getting service so it was out of commission for a day of the week as well needs to get service but that was two weekends in a row or two weeks in a row where I lost some revenue so we're trying to make up for that this week and in the following months I guess oh and yesterday <laughs> my truck was also dead in the morning and I couldn't start it my engine was warm because my engine heater was working but I didn't have enough juice to crank it over and so I called Collins Brothers Towing from uh, in, from Minnesota they came out and charged me 177 US dollars to, just to attached their booster cables to my my battery posts under the hood and start my truck up in less than 30 seconds I turned out to be 246 Canadian dollars it's the next day already and I'm still like 177 US dollars wow guess I should have been a tow truck driver <laughs> today's gonna be a, be, be a better day let's get at it let's go get our work done let's go home to the family are ready to roll before we get going thank you to Matt our newest channel member you too can become a channel member going down below my video clicking the join button for about the price of a coffee a month you get special perks like you get early access to my videos you also get access to members only content and you also get a little special badge beside your name in the comment section so your comments stick out you can go down below you can read more about it if you're not interested that's cool too but thank you to the members who are joined. Do appreciate it, do appreciate it a lot. I've got my Timmy's. <laughs> I just got a baby one. I was reading up about caffeine last night and how caffeine doesn't actually give you energy. It just inhibits your brain from feeling drowsy, but you don't actually get any new energy. So I'm trying something. I also don't have time to drink a full large one by the time I get to the customer. There's that also. Okay. Proceed to the highlighted route. Let me check your work here. Uh, you gotta double check your work. Okay, so up Canada Way. There to Saskatchewan. Yep, that's good. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, wrong one. Okay. Now I'm ready. <laughs> All the wheels are turning, nothing has frozen. It's a cold one out here today. About minus 28 overnight Celsius. Look at this guy parked right in the driveway. He's been there over an hour since I got up. Just hanging out. Why not? No one needs to get in here. This place 
place gets a little bit crazy because they have a Tim's here. And Tim Hortons, for some reason, does something to Canadians. It, like, draws moss to the flame. It's, uh... You put a Tim's in your location, you just got chaos. There's people everywhere. They don't care how they park. It's like they panic. They have to get inside as fast as possible. It doesn't matter where or how they park. There's Tim's. So this morning shouldn't, <coughs> excuse me, shouldn't take us too long. I mean, this lumber will be super quick to deliver as long as they're ready for me, which they said they are. The only thing that could delay us is my reload. I'm not too sure what I'm loading. On the message that I have, it says skidded farm equipment. So if it's on skids, that should make it go pretty quick, right? Just throw the skids on the truck, tie them down, bada bing, bada boom. 100 meters, turn left on, perimeter highway, highway 100.
grab all the straps by the hook end and I pull them all the way out there past the truck until the ends of them are about at my front bumper and then I turn around and I walk back this way and I put all the hooks right here so they're easy to grab you can see exactly where the ends of the straps are this way the straps are out of his way and he can do whatever he needs to do while he's unloading and I can take care of this here where he's not driving over my straps and also I'm not getting in his way good straps that aren't frozen. The sun is getting higher. So it's been 20 minutes since the time I parked here to the time I am done all my work. Take my straps off, rolling them up. Now I'm just waiting for him to get his product off the trailer. I know in Europe and some other places I've seen before that it's the trucker's responsibility to unload the trailer. Now for the overwhelming most part of trucking here in North America, you do not unload your own trailer. You don't load your trailer, you don't unload your trailer. You don't touch the freight other than to secure it. That's their responsibility at the shippers and receivers. That's that's how things work here. I, I like it that way uh, because there's, I can imagine there would be a whole lot more liability if I were to jump into a piece of machinery like a forklift, because then I'd have to be forklift certified. And uh, sorry to disappoint all you, uh, you know, roaring fans of the, I am not forklift sort certified. And I'm okay with that. But anyway, I'd have to be <laughs> forklift certified and then I have to jump in their equipment because I don't carry a forklift with me, right? Otherwise, I have to put one on the back of my trailer. That would take a lot more weight and space. And if I unload their product and I damage it while I'm unloading it, guess who's paying for it? Guess who's at fault? So my responsibility here is they, they put the freight on the trailer I tell them how it needs to, like I help them put it on there. For the most part, they always know where to put it and how to put it, how to load it. But the final say of how the load is loaded is me. Because that's my load, I'm the one that has to secure it. So once I'm happy with the way they loaded it, then I secure it, that's my responsibility. As soon as it's on the trailer, it's on my property. It's my responsibility. So once I leave their yard, get on the roads, then that load is completely, whatever happens to that load is on me. Until I get to the receiver like this, I get all my equipment off. Now I go back in my truck. Sometimes I stay out there and help them if they want me to help. But now it's their responsibility. If anything happens to their freight while they're unloading it, that's not on me. So it covers my butt that way. Uh, I guess it works different. I, I watch YouTubers from like uh, Europe sometimes, Australia, and other places around the world, uh, English speaking places, uh, so I can understand what they're saying. Because I, I like to. Uh, learn how trucking works there too right yeah a lot of places in Europe you unload your own truck I find that to be strange oh double checked where my reload was it's not in Oak Law where we slept it's on the north side of Winnipeg ah glad I double checked that it's only what 10 miles away not even my appointment is for 10 a.m. and it's 9 25 right now I'm gonna go there now I'll be a little bit early Huh, I wonder why I thought it was an old bluff. I thought someone told me that I'll, that I'll be loading an old bluff. I thought that's what they told me. Huh, 
Either way, misunderstanding, but that's okay. I'm not that far away. I'm not even going to take my jacket off. We're that close. Turn right and then. Turn right at 120 meters. Light as a feather again. that when I unload in Saskatchewan Monday morning, I'm grabbing a reload from the same location that I'm delivering to. Ah, man, bad Continue timing. Continue on this road for seven guys. kilometers. Why is there two trucks? Why is there a truck in the left lane here? Now you're blocking traffic for everybody. Oh, that bugs me. You got a stoplight, get in the right lane. Look at this, now all traffic is stuck behind those two. all the time so yeah I'll be uh, delivering my load into uh, Langbank Saskatchewan and then picking up my load at the same location which is awesome because there's zero empty miles then that doesn't always happen that way so we get lucky every now and then in 200 meters turn right on Field way ahead. Slide left in 15 meters. Well, this is a little different. It's a very tight yard. They wanted me to nose in here so that they can load me here. using that dock anyway. So I nose in so that my trailer is out here in the open. And it'll load me back here. I might have to back up a little bit yet for him, but I guess we'll see. Another guy who got pulled, or who just pulled in here. I guess he's going to get unloaded there. I'm going to back up a little bit more. I just need to leave room for cars to be able to get through back here. I can bring my trailer back by another 10 feet or so at least. And then uh, they have all this space here to load me up. Though I think that guy's going to have to move unless they're going to unload him first. They might unload him first even though I was here before him. Looks like he's a local guy, and those guys usually get priority at places. They're always in a rush. They forget. I, too, am in a rush. But not really. I mean, after this, I just go home. But you never say you're not in a rush, because if you tell people you're not in a rush, they don't rush. Always. I'm always in a rush. Always. Some days I'm in more of a rush than other days, but I'm always in a rush. My straps that I used before are all nicely warming up underneath here. I'm not too sure what they're even loading on me. I have no idea. It's going to like a farm equipment place and it says uh, steel skidded freight. Or steel on skids. He said I had five or six skids. He didn't know for sure. Five or six skids. And they're, some of them are bigger than the regular one, so I'll just hurry up and wait. You guys ready for this? Full load. I was told this is going to be a full load. They needed a 53 foot trailer and that was going to be 40,000 pounds. You ready for what I got? load I did double check are you sure are you sure you're not missing anything where's the rest of it right no I said that's it okay I'll tie it down get out of here before you change your mind how much weight do we have 5,500 pounds 34,500 less than I thought I'd be pulling 
Good thing I'm not paid by weight. <laughs> You did good this week, Blue. It was a bit of a short week. Actually, right in here, that sensor, right in there. And get it to focus on that. See that black wire going down there? That's the sensor that got replaced. Ah, you can maybe see, see it comes up here. Come on, camera, work with me. Here, the wire from down there, down to there. It's a crankshaft speed sensor, or a crankcase speed sensor. It's hard to see, it's kind of buried in back there. I thought we could see it best from here. One sec, let me get a flashlight. Good old Howe's flashlight. Okay. Ah, you see, right there. Can I zoom in anymore? Come on. Right there, you see that black cord that goes in there? That's the sensor that got replaced. That caused all my problems. So, now that that's taken care of, we can focus on making some revenue. But first we gotta go home, it's the weekend. That was the first engine issue that I've had with this truck since I bought it. And the sensor was so old and brittle yeah, on the work order. So it's so old and brittle when they tried to take it out of there, it just, just broke off and they had to actually dig it out of there and get the whole sensor out of the engine block and then put the new one in. So uh, very thankful for that. Shout out to the guys at PBX, always doing good work for me, always. I think I've got everything out of the truck now. Got my bodega cooler out here. Just been cleaning it out. This thing has been a lifesaver, honestly. Amazing. It's like a cooler that you take with you anywhere. You can plug it into your truck or it comes with a, a outlet for your wall in your house too. It can be a fridge and a freezer. I use both sides as a fridge, but that's uh, been a lifesaver. I've been able to take food along with me. I also got my clock back up in here now. Since I moved shops, I haven't put anything up on the walls, so I have started now. Got my clock there, got my new calendar. Right here. Got my house banner there. Got one bull snot poster up here already. So slowly, slowly coming together. Bit by bit. I may not get things cleaned up and organized quickly, but I do get things cleaned up and organized eventually. Drives me nuts. This is still very messy in here, but it is getting better. I just don't spend a lot of time here because usually I'm just dropping off old blue, getting all my stuff out of it, and not really messing around with any of this. I usually just park the truck in here and head on home because why would I want to spend all my time in the shop here when I can be at home, right? So I do a little bit here. I just got the truck in here now. I do a little bit now. Next time I come and get the truck to leave, I do a little bit more then. And every time I come in here, slowly bit by bit, we'll get this shop up and running properly. And I might put up a second level up here yet for extra storage up there. And then I want to frame in a bathroom over there yet. It's already plumbed in. I don't know if uh, I've shown you before yet or not, but oh, you can't even really see it back here. I'd have to move all this stuff, obviously. You see a little blue cap there. See, it is plumbed in. You got water in here. You got an outlet up there for a hot water tank. I'm guessing that's for the, on the second level, the hot, or hot water tank up there. I can put a shower in here then if I wanted to. I don't know if I'd ever use it, but we'll see what happens. Little bit by little bit.